What's poppin' Tea Squad? It's me, Keisha, and I am here with a new episode of Spill the Tea. Today's episode is all about heartbreak, relationships, love, and divorce. First up, we have Erica Mena and Safari Samuels. Erica just announced here recently on her IG story when she was doing a club night that she and Safari are officially divorce so it seems like their marriage is over safari's page has been um down for about a month now he got rid of his page um i don't know if it's because he was fighting for their marriage or he was just going through the hurt of the divorce but she seems pretty happy about the situation you know, all I'm concerned about is the children. Hopefully they'll be able to co-parent and have really good, solid, healthy relationships with their children and with amongst themselves at some point. I'm sure we'll see all of this play out on the upcoming season of Love & Hip Hop Atlanta, which is currently filming. So we'll see the aftermath, the during math, the before math of it all. What do you guys think? I mean, none of us really thought this relationship was going to last. It went farther than what any of us ever thought that it would. So, you know, they tried and they failed, unfortunately. But that's life. Erica is not letting this divorce stop her. She and her new besties, Sierra and Bam, recently just took a trip to Vegas and they are living it up. Check out this footage. Yo, this is how we pulled up, drop top, landed in Vegas. Cece, you do not play. My bitch wakes up so rich. She just don't know what to do with her money. Bam. Yo, this shit on It's my baby's first time in Vegas. First I'm, time. I'm here to pop her Vegas cherry. I love you to the moon and back. Keep getting money. And here the ladies are vibing out and dancing to the BAMS song that she released some months ago. Everybody's changed, ready to hit the Vegas streets. Everybody looks cute. Erica over there shaking that cement she calls a butt but go ahead on sis go ahead on uh i don't know how i feel about the blonde hair on erica i think it looks cute to me i think it's cute i think it's cute i think everybody look cute sierra is giving me a very 90s vibe with her look the bam looks really cute with her little furry top and her booty shorts body on everything after having three children yes ma'am yes god erica's boobs look great i swear you cannot tell erica she is not a thug <laughs> you cannot tell erica she is not a shooter she got that blick blick <laughs> like erica is a thug. Said, i don't know what you bitches on but it's giving bro i've been a see before the show my nigga said what size bag you wear Ooh. Now, Erica know damn well that dancing is not her ministry. Girl, just be cute. 
Just be pretty. Just show off your titties and that botched booty of yours. And just let that let that be your thing, girl. Let that be your thing. Uh, and Sierra, I know she needed some Epsom salt <laughs> later on when she took a bath. Because I know them knees was hurting with all that wag and she dragging. Can't wait to see if any of this makes the show. Now on to my next story. So after everything went down with Will and Jada and Chris Rock at the Source Awards. <laughs> I'm just playing at the Oscars. Lamar Odom decided to take to his social media to add his two cents to the Will and Jada Chris Rock drama. And he posted a picture of Jada and Will at the Oscars after when he won his award and how they, you know, lean towards each other and press their foreheads against one another. And he captioned the photo. He loves his wife. I do not condone violence against anyone. At Will Smith loves at Jada Pinkett Smith. I was told love covers a multitude of sins. I see everyone arguing the merits of this altercation, taking sides, dragging them both to hell when it all boils down to love. He loves his wife. She was hurting. It is a husband's responsibility to protect his wife. That is what he vowed to God and her. He owes us zero explanation as to why he chose to hit Chris Rock. He did what a husband is called to do, protect his wife from anything and anyone who causes her pain. Had I protected my wife versus mentally, emotionally, and spiritually hurting her, I may still be married. Let's use this as a teaching moment. Let's learn to set boundaries. Let's learn to be humble. Let's learn to embrace and forgive each other in the midst of our trials and tribulations versus sitting on a throne of judgment. Last I checked, we, the peanut gallery, and we do not have a heaven or hell to put anyone in. Same thing that makes you laugh will bring you to your knees. Sending good vibes only. Check my story. I am in need of some services. Love y'all for loving and supporting me, L-O. Everything he said was agreeable. I understood it. Well written for the most part. And I agree with a lot of the things that he said. The only issue that I have is quit trying to make fetch a thing, Gretchen. I'm so sick of you bringing up Chloe every five seconds. The whole time you was on Big Brother, you brought her name up, hoping that she would watch the show and reach out to you. It didn't work. Every interview, you bring up her name. Now you're bringing up her name on social media. It is over, Lamar. You fucked up. You had the opportunity, and you fucked it up with your drug use, with your cheating, and like you said, your mental and spiritual and emotional abuse. It's a wrap. Ain't nobody coming back to that. That lady done been through enough. And y'all know I got my feelings when it comes to the Kardashians. But leave that lady alone. She already over there not eating. <laughs> she already over there starving herself. She already over there photoshopping all her pictures. Got her hands out here looking like Skeletor. That lady is going through enough psychologically. She already don't know who her real father is. Or if she do know who her real father is, she's in denial about the whole situation, child. The lady just got done going through a nigga cheating on her so many times she can't even keep count. And he had a baby on her. Like the lady done been through enough. She already had to nurse you back to health after you was in a brothel getting high for several days with I don't know how many bitches. Leave that lady alone, Lamar. Going on about your life. Stay sober. Stay focused on your children. You talk more about Chloe than you do your own motherfucking kids. God damn. Can you focus on them? Can you focus on me? Can you do that, please? Baby, can you focus on your kids? Kids. Love more focus. Can't you see? Your kids just want to love you, baby. Look them in their eyes. Ooh. <laughs> Focus on your goddamn kids and your health and your sobriety and stop focusing on fucking Chloe. Do right by the next woman that God bless you with. Take that as a learning experience and move the hell on, sir. Please. 
please. So it is official. Waka and Tammy are getting a divorce, but everything is all good in the hood. Check out what Waka had to say during a recent interview. How are you and Tammy doing? That's my best friend. That's my dog. Oh, okay. So, you no, know, people you... just want to be all kind of like fighting and hating and this and something happened. And it's like, hell no, nah, we just grown. Like, why Why is it that when people just, not even shit happens, like when people evolve for the better, when, like, why do it got to be something attached to it that's slimy as spit? You know what I'm saying? It's just disgusting. Like, when you just say some people, like, no, something happened. I know. Uh, girl, you're glowing, girl. F him. Or, Fuck her, Walker. She's ain't shit. Like, why I got to be so nasty if we ain't nasty? Yeah. It's love, though. Me and Tammy's Tammy. Oh, and then are you are guys going to try to work it back out and do the whole, hey, well, we got she's your best question. friend. Let's get another question going. <laughs> anything anything besides that might be toxic, so. Uh, oh. I'm too, I just don't like, uh, uh. I'm, I'm, I was rooting for y'all, though, regardless, so. Still do. You know? I, I've, I believe it, so I don't care. The biggest blessing I had in my life, I can always say, was Charlie. Yeah. I got the blessing to raise another human being, especially a young woman at that and just see all the challenges that women go through and just that shit deep. And mm -hmm. that's what actually made me feel like a role model, a hero, number one. That's when I started like, damn, I'm actually number one in somebody's life. Like, that's crazy. Like, this, like you know what I'm saying? Like, that feel good. Yeah. That feel good. That feel better than hearing a million people on stage. Oh, I, it made me appreciate the million people on stage. It made me appreciate everything about my life raising Charlie. That's a beautiful feeling. So though. just to go back to your question about like a Tammy, I couldn't, it's nothing Tammy in the world could do to make me hate her. Just for the fact of Charlie. Aww. Literally nothing, nothing on planet earth. So it, nothing could ever happen on that kind of level. Cause anything I ever would do will affect. And that's some real shit. When you separate, divorce, break up from somebody, it shouldn't involve hatred. And I don't want to ever talk to this person again. One of the most weirdest things about relationships is when they're over, you have to pretend like this person never existed in your life. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is somebody that you spent day and night with, told your hopes and dreams to, cried, embarrassing moments, held every night. You know what I'm saying? Loved. And then when it's over, you're really left to, like I said, act like this person doesn't exist. You know what I'm saying? It's the weirdest shit ever. And I think that it's healthy that they have a relationship still with one another and that they're friends and that everything is amicable and that they're not fighting. Hopefully we'll get to see that a healthy, you know, separation on this upcoming season of Walker and Tammy that is currently filming. And I do appreciate what he said about Charlie, you know, that, you know, she gave me something that nobody else has ever given me, which was this little girl, this daughter that I love. Um, and you know, hopefully with the divorce, they'll both be able to find love again. Walker will be able to have the family that he always wanted, you know, with his own biological children and Tammy can, you know, focus on her career or somebody else or whatever the case may be. Now, one thing that I will say is, you know, I gave you all the scoop the last time we talked about Walker and Tammy that, you know, he still had been out here doing his thing thing, but, um, I don't know if, how long they have been separated or whatever the case may be. I just hope that they're happy and that they both continue to support each other and be friends. And in our last story of the day, recently ex I am athlete podcaster, YouTuber Channing Crowder had this to say about Russell and Sierra. Take a listen. Very interesting. Yeah, if Russell ain't had that bread, she ain't gonna be with him. <laughs> Russell Square. Yeah, Russell, Russell Square. Square. Russell Square. Sierra, Sierra had a she she has a good situation, but she was you gonna leave future they, and in, get with Russell Wilson. The, the, the thing is, I think thing, that's what you don't leave though. future and get with Russell Women Wilson. Like, it's, a, it's a type. Listen, Women bro, everybody peace. got a type. Yeah, that's true. Everybody has a type. You gonna leave future and get with Russell Wilson? Is, though, when you he's have, so goddamn square, and I love him on the field. He's this. a square, Channing. He's a fucking square, Channing. You go from this level of toxicity. You just want something stable. 
You want the guy that was sitting with that girl with that big old mouth at the draft that was laughing, and you knew she deserved to be with him. <laughs> goofball. Yeah, you want that you guy. You want to get with you, goofballs, no, husband. You want the guy that told me, you know what? I was I was praying, and God told me to go save her. That's what the man told me to my face. There is so much to unpack here. First of all, Channing Crowder sounds like an absolute moron. He sounds like an idiot. He sounds like a fuck boy. He sounds childish. Everything about what he had to say seemed like some shit that a nigga in his teens or 20s would say. Not this old ass nigga. First of all, do people have a type? Yeah. But with age, with growth, with different things that happen in your life, your change, your your taste in the opposite sex or whoever you want to date changes. I remember when I was a young girl, all I liked was light skinned niggas. That was my thing. Light skin, light skin, light skin. Then I went through my chocolate phase. Then I went through my white boy phase. Now it's an open opportunity <laughs> market over here. Anybody can get it. And that just comes from whatever season that I'm in. She dated Future. And that probably outside of her son was one of the worst decisions that she probably could have ever made for herself. But the good thing that came out of that was growth. Growth in realizing this is not how I want to be treated by a man. This is not the standard of a man that I want. Um, I'm going to, in the future, demand respect have boundaries with a man. I don't want a man with a whole bunch of kids and baby mamas. And I most definitely don't want a man that left me while I was pregnant with our child. So she had to go through that to then realize that I don't ever want that again. I want a man that's going to love me and my child, love me wholly, love me spiritually, love me unconditionally. A man that's going to be there through thick and thin, that's going to be a father, a leader, a praying man. Somebody that's going to lead me and guide me and this family, our family. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that is stable. Somebody that wants me and my son and wants a family. Somebody that is a family man. Somebody that don't play games. Somebody that ain't in the club every night. Somebody that ain't laying up with this woman and that woman and busting nuts up and this girl and that girl and got 50 million baby mamas and barely take care of their kids. When you get to a Finally, that point, it ain't even about age. When you get to that point where you are tired of the bullshit, a Russell Wilson come in your life, and that is one of the biggest blessings that could ever happen to you. So for this man to get on this show and say that only reason why she's with him is because of his money, you sound like a goddamn fool. Let's not act like Russell is some booger wolf, like he's an ugly man. He's a very handsome man. He's well-spoken. He seems charismatic. He's intelligent. You know what I'm saying? Well-dressed, well-versed, cultured, all of those things. He has a power about him. He demands respect. He's one of the best in what he does. Who, do, who wouldn't want a man like that? You, Channing Crowder, need to be happy that your wife even took a second look at your ass because while you sitting up here calling him a lame you sitting up here talking through teeth that are the same size as a baby shark <laughs> you baby shark do, 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 looking ass nigga you have literal baby teeth my nigga you have toddler teeth which says a lot about why the fuck you're so fucking childish you're not good looking, sir. You're basic as fuck. Basic. You look like spoiled milk, sir. You look like you're lactose intolerant. Boy, if you don't get somewhere and sit the fuck down because your wife is gorgeous. How the fuck she even decided to lay down and procreate with you, I will never understand. Oh, but I do understand. What you're reflecting on to Russell and Sierra is actually your life because your wife got with you because of the money because if you was just a regular Joe Smo 
a UPS driver, you know what I'm saying, an accountant or whatever the case may be, she wouldn't have looked at you twice with that chin strap on your face. Can you grow a whole beard? You probably can't, sir. Sitting up here with this goddamn baby gap shirt on, looking stupid, old square pig, head face ass nigga. You look dumb in the face. You look like you were born with some type of abnormality. <laughs> like, and you got the nerve to sit up here and call somebody else lame. Have you looked in the mirror with your whack ass? You are a cornball, my nigga. That bitch is with you for the coin. Please believe that. Because looks-wise, body-wise, and most certainly teeth-wise, ain't nobody checking for you. If you don't go to the dentist, my nigga, instead of going to a pediatrician <laughs> to get your teeth checked on, go get some fucking teeth, nigga. Go get some fucking veneers. Go and get a hair transplant for the front of your fucking big-ass widescreen forehead. Boy, suck a dick. You sound foolish. You really honestly do. And you need to have several fucking seats. And I'm happy that the other guys on the show told you that don't nobody want that for the rest of their life. Don't nobody want no fuck nigga for the rest of their life. Don't no woman want a man that's just out here in the streets fucking over women and fucking over me and breaking my heart. So what are you saying? Everything that came out your mouth is absolute garbage, sir. Boy, ugh, niggas irk. Niggas irk. That's why I don't talk to you motherfuckers after 5 p.m. on some Charlemagne and God type shit. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys thought about today's video. What do you think about Erica and Safari divorcing? What do you think about Waka and Tammy being amicable in their relationship? What do you think about Lamar Odom still pining after Chloe? And what do you think about Channing Crowder, old crawfish looking ass nigga, and his statements on Russell and Sierra? Let's talk down below in the comment section. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell button. I love you guys, and I will see you on the next video. Bye.